Welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. I'm Kim Cavanaugh. Hey, Lee, what time is it? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look at the computer here. <laughs> yeah. Check the time. How many well, times a, do you look at your computer to get the right I, time? Uh, and date, too. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a computer in front of me to, to check that. I, I wouldn't know what day it was, practically. Now, something I need to point out is that we have category view, and we have switched to classic view because we get a little more detail on it. Right, and it's a little easier to follow down here. So that's just on the left-hand side. You can switch back and yeah. forth. So I'm going to click on date and time because that was our question. And there's the date. Hey, it's the 11th of uh, March. And there's the time. Right. And you notice the current time zone is Eastern Daylight Time. Now, this is all, um, this is all pretty automatic. Right, pretty but, much. But sometimes there can something can happen that might throw off your date and time. One of the funniest things that you can watch is if you see your clock getting off in your computer. Mm -hmm. There's a little battery in your computer that a lot of people don't even know about. Right, almost like a hearing aid battery. Yeah, right? and if it starts to go down in power, that's the first spot you'll see. It. Right. So if you've got an older computer, you might see that your date and time's not right. That's one of the things that you want to check. You have to actually open up the computer to do it, but. But it's right there on yeah. top. They're pretty Let's easy check to the change. time zone. Now, here's the checkbox you were talking about. Uh, that's the about. one we were talking about before. So it's the you know, and automatically it's all it's it's set there, pretty much mm -hmm. checked that way. So the computer will check. It knows it has a database basically of yeah. when daylight savings time changes all the time. That was now, a major upgrade that, a few years ago. That remember that? Was and you know what? Uh, Microsoft had to as one of the patches we talked about automatic updates. They had to change it because yeah. Congress in the United States changed when daylight savings time was going to happen. So as an automatic update, you had to get that new da your database refreshed because those dates have now changed. Now, one of the hardest parts here is even though you got this pretty map of the world, it's not interactive. Yeah. You have to know what time zone you're in, and there's a lot of time <laughs> so, zones. So the map serves the purpose of giving you something to look at? It's very pretty. It's nice. That's about <laughs> it. Colors. Okay. So, so very easy, and, and of course you change, you move, or you know something like that. You're going to be in a different time zone, or uh, you know your your computer for some reason yeah. uh, loses its time. That's where you would go to change that. Now this display thing, we're not even going to talk about very much because we already talked about it. Yeah, it's the same thing. It links over to where we were editing right. displays. So before. that's the same as uh, appearance on the other settings. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so now we're going to get down into the F's. Yeah, this is uh, when we get into something a little more advanced. These are folder options. And we may not even finish this today because really? even though this is computers for the completely clueless, this tends to have the potential to get very advanced. Well, let's don't do it then. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things we <laughs> definitely right, want okay, to do. All right, all right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Okay, so we'll folder options. Always look at the general stuff. Do you want to show common tasks and folders, or do you want to use Windows Classic folders? So you have these two different views that you can use. Now, by common tasks, you, you, already, you just showed us one when you mm -hmm. showed how to switch the control panel. Mm -hmm. right? And, of course, everything in, in, a, in a Windows computer, everything in most computers is contained in a folder. Um, and so these folder options allow you to, to change how those, those windows appear, basically. So you've got it set that way, and you just showed it. So over on the left-hand side is where you would see common tasks. If you change that, and of Courtney will kind of zoom in to the left, and we'll click Apply, okay, and you'll see... See that? How yeah. that those little common tasks that were over on the left, they disappear. So if you wanted to get more space, you could turn that off. And you, those little common tasks annoy you. Another customizing thing that you do to suit what you like. Right, exactly. Now this next one, though, can get a little dangerous. This is browsing folders. Now we have it checked so that open each folder in the same window so that as you navigate through folders... You can use the backwards and the forwards button. Yeah. Just like in a browser. This can get painful down here because if you open each folder in its own window, every time you click on something, you've opened up another window. Uh, so if you go exploring around your computer, you yes. can end up with 20, 30 windows open. It's not going to be pretty. Right, and every time you open a folder, it's going to show up just as a button down on the taskbar. Down at the bottom, yeah. and then you got to go down and tiny click little it, buttons, and not good stuff. Yeah, so leave that one alone. Leave that alone. Yeah. All right. And then this one is, uh, I don't know, it's interesting, but I'm not really crazy about it. You can have it single click to open an item. Mm -hmm. So when you when you see an item on your desktop, you click once and it opens. And that's kind of the way things work in a web browser. If yeah. I click on something in a web browser, I don't double click it. Now the, I click once. The problem with this is you can no longer select it by clicking on it once. Oh. So using the double click to open an item is a good idea. A single click to select it, double click to open it. And an it. example of that, maybe you're down in your documents folder and you've got a document that you want to copy right and then paste into a different location. I'll, sh I'll show you a really quick example that's easy. 
You see this graphic here? Right. Well, I want to customize my desktop, so I'm going to put it over there. Actually, I have to change something here. Where's the arrange? I don't want to auto arrange, and I don't want to. I'm showing them some of our big secrets here that we want to save for later. But see, now I can take this graphic, and maybe I want to put some of these programs over here. Right. But you notice how I, I clicked on it once and dragged it? Right. If I had been using single click to launch it, they would have opened. Right. So most of the time, I think most folks will leave that as set to double click. Right? Yeah. That's, that... It's not that hard. So that's, again, that's folder options. Okay. So that's the general category. Now, what is the view category? Tabs across the top. Now, the view category, I don't recommend people mess with this very much. There are okay. some little things in here that I think people should check. First off, it says here, do not show hidden files and folders. That's Why? Probably... Why would I want to hide things from myself? Well, actually, the operating system wants to hide things from you. Why does the operating system want to keep me in the dark? So right? you don't go where you don't belong and mess something up. <laughs> and that's exactly right, and that's how mine is set. I, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. If I know I need to go down and look in some of the operating system stuff, uh, I know where to go to turn that on. Yes, and sometimes you have to. That's why we're showing it. To right, people. but you know, if you're if you're not comfortable in in getting down into the actual wind, the the, the inner workings of if Windows, if you're not comfortable with that, get that know. ninth grader down the street to come yep. up and help you. Right, right, one of your grandkids. Now, this next one, I think you should uncheck. This says hide extensions for known file types. Okay. Extensions are the the three, three or four letters. Right. The new stuff has got four letters. Mm -hmm at the end of a file name that tell you what it goes with. Okay. And you, you might look at graphic files, but you want to know what kind of graphic it is? Okay. I got you. You'll is never it a know. JPG or GIF or a TIF? PNG. PNG, those are all extensions. Right. So I'm uh, going to uncheck that okay. and apply it. We're not going to see anything happen here. But when we look at our files now, we'll see what type of file it is just by looking at that. That's handy. I like that. That one's very important. Now, the rest of these, I really caution people to play with it. It's very dangerous. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can mess things up. Simplest little things. If you do any changes in experimentation, right. make a note. Oh. So you There's know no how to go to back there. Oh, wait. No, I see a button that says restore default. That's a good button. Okay. Just so remember if you've you got. kind of gone in there and, and played around and you don't like what you see, you can always go back into the mm -hmm. folder options and restore the defaults and everything will be happy again. Yeah, there, there's a lot of options in here, but uh, this button, you know, so put that check mark back in. Right. Now, one other thing, the uh, part up at the top about folder views, um, you can customize a, a single individual folder. So you've got one folder that you mm -hmm. want to appear and behave one way, but you want everything else to, to operate a different way. Yeah. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Why you would, I don't know exactly, but you can't. Now, let's talk about file types. We kind of touched on that with file extensions. You know what? We're going to talk oh, about file well, types. Gonna, next week? Next week, we're oh, probably going to get exciting. to that. Well, file types is pretty extensive. When we get into that, very often we have, and this one comes in all the time, programs try to take over all the file types that they can. Right. You might not want that. A common thing, uh, any kind of media program, right. whether it's video, graphics, or audio. They get greedy. They think they're the best, and they take over a lot of things. This will let you go in and so fix. So next week, you're going to show us how to overcome that obstacle. Yeah. Wow, it's a teaser. And we'll fix things up, too. Okay. All right. So uh, stay with us here, and uh, come back next week, actually. Yeah. And uh, we'll show you more about how to take control of your computer and uh, get your Windows computer to behave the way that you want. Okay. Okay. We'll see you next week.